All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Giant Steps. Um, we're really excited to have you to here today. I'm Melissa Serio, the Educator Research Lead with Giant Steps and a former high school teacher. And I'm here with my colleague, Jenna. Hi, everyone. I'm Jenna Ross. I'm an ELA content curriculum specialist and a former elementary school teacher. And today I'll be modeling the steps you need to take to set up your first live session as Melissa provides the directions. Awesome. Thanks, Jenna. So our goal today is that you will leave today's session ready to play your first live session with your students. And we'll do that in three easy steps. We'll show you how to create a classroom, uh, we'll build a practice set and we'll launch a live session together. Before we jump in, I'd like to highlight a couple of quick notes about our session today. So our session will be recorded and we will share the information presented at the end of the session. And we will have time for questions and answers at the end of our session. So if you have questions, please post them so we can come back to them. And please note, in order to participate in the chat today, you will need to create a YouTube channel if you don't already have one. Uh, and today's focus will be setting on setting up your classroom and your first live session, and it'll be focused more on the teacher experience. However, we are offering weekly uh, webinars where you can leverage, uh, where you can experience a live session as a student, and we encourage you to join those sessions. And you can sign up on the Giant Steps webpage um, or follow the link in the chat. All right, with that, uh, let's start off with talking about what is Giant Steps. Giant Steps is a digital learning experience designed for student collaboration and independent practice. It was designed by educators for educators. And Giant Steps is different than other tech tools because students work collaboratively on teams. Speed is not necessary to win. Student motivation and rewards are built into the game. And avatars build a sense of community and identity in the ed tech tool. All right, with that, let's talk about how Giant Steps accelerates learning. Giant Steps accelerates learning by enabling teachers to build standards aligned practice sets or select certified practice sets from the public library. Uh, hosts, it allows to enables teachers to host a live session game for collaborative student uh, practice in class. It allow, enables teachers to create assignments for independent student practice inside the classroom and at home, uh, as well as it enables teachers to monitor student progress and accuracy in real time to celebrate growth, provide intervention to address learning disruption, and accelerate student academic growth. So from the student perspective, Giant Steps helps accelerate learning by encouraging students to practice content independently outside of class by providing rewards like XP experience points and avatars every, every time they practice, uh, and avatar items for every time they practice. Uh, engage, it enables, encourages students uh, to engage in retrieval practice by automating daily remixes to reinforce content learned in class. It enables students to collaborate and support their classmates with stickers and high fives. And finally, uh, it builds a growth mindset through motivating feedback and positive messaging, through uh, in immediate feedback and positive messaging. All right, so let's start turning practice into play. Okay. So now that we're ready to walk you through the process of getting ready for your first live session, we'll be guiding you through the experience um, and you'll, you'll log in now. So if you already have an account, we encourage you to log in. If you don't have an account, I'll, I'll verbally walk you through the steps now. So go to app.giantsteps.app, select teacher, sign in with either Google, Clever, or Microsoft. And you'll type in what your students should call you. You'll select your grade level, subject, language, uh, country, state, time zone, and then you'll click next. Quickly review and accept the terms and conditions. And then you will autom the, you will be ready and taken to your teacher homepage. I'll give you a moment. 
And if you have, and again, if you haven't already logged in, please do so now to your teacher account. And let's get started. So the very first step in getting ready to host your first live session game with students is to create your classroom. So click on, um, click on classrooms at the top navigation bar. And your classroom will allow you to host live sessions with your students, track individual progress, and measure against your school's standards. All right, so now you'll go ahead and click Create Classroom. And then you'll enter your classroom name. And so as you can see, Jenna is entering it here. Uh, you'll enter the period or section of the name, however you typically refer to your class. You'll select, uh, you can select multiple grades, you can select multiple subjects, uh, and then create, click Create Classroom. Now, a couple of things I want to highlight here. Uh, the next step is to add students. And you can, there are two ways to add students before class. The first is through uh, Google Classroom. And so you can click the um, add, Google, add through Google Classroom button here. Uh, add from Google Classroom button here. And then you can also add by email, in which you just need a list of your students' emails in that class, and you can add them there. The next way to add students is by generating a link, and this will happen live in your classroom, and we'll show you that at the end of our session today. Fantastic. And now we're ready to begin creating our first practice set. Uh, so, uh, the first, your practice set you can use for your first live session. It, today, we're going to be creating one that is focused on supporting your current classroom culture and community. So today, we're going to build a practice set that contains three different types of questions. And we'll provide the questions for you to make it easy for your first practice set to get, as we work together today. So in order to do that, we're going to start by clicking My Library at the top. Awesome. And then uh, click on Create Practice Set. And you'll see a pop out here. And you're going to title this practice set Our Classroom. And you can enter some context or description that's going to be helpful for you. In this case, we're going to put in our first practice set together. Uh, and just a couple of uh, highlights here. Uh, as you get used to using Giant Steps, you can create folders to easily organize all of your practice sets. Uh, you can select the subject here. Because we're talking about classroom culture, we're going to select Other. And if you have multiple students or multiple grade levels in one class, you can select multiple grade levels or just one. Awesome. Then you can select the the language that you would like this practice set to be in. Please note this will not translate your practice set questions, but it will uh, change the way in which the students experience uh, the product itself. All right, and then finally, we'll leave the we'll leave this practice set private. So that means it's only available to you. Uh, and now we're going to pick an image for our practice set. So if you scroll all the way to the top, click Cover Image. And this is a fun way to differentiate each of the practice sets in your own library. So you can pick a color that you really enjoy, and you can pick an image to add here. Then you'll go back over to Details, scroll all the way down, and click Create Set. Excellent. And now we're ready to move on to creating our very first question in our practice set. So the first question in our classroom community set is going to be a text response question. And so you'll go ahead and click Add Question. And then you'll select Text Response. I just wanted to take a moment before we click on Text Response to highlight all of the different question types here. Uh, that you can see. While we're only going to talk about three explicitly, you can see there are lots of options to add different types of questions to each practice set experience you want to provide for your students. But for now, let's click text response. Excellent. So we'll enter the prompt here. 
will enter the prompt, what was, enter your name, fit their favorite subject in school? So you can see Jenna has written, what was Miss Ross's favorite subject in school? Notice you have the opportunity to add media if you would like. And you can do that in multiple ways. And then we have, then you'll enter the correct response. Notice that you have the option to add a mul an alternative correct response or enable partial credit. So you can see here that Jenna has added mathematics as an alternative response to math. Uh, and then if she clicks enable partial credit, if a student gets something close to this, they will get partial credit for the answer. So this is helpful if you know that your students tend to misspell uh, specific words, but you want to make sure that they know what it is and you're not assessing, uh, you're not ensuring students are practicing their spelling. All right. Uh, and then I uh, just want to highlight, you'll notice multiple features as you scroll down and we'll touch on each one of these features as we move forward. Um, but here I wanted to uh, highlight the, one of the features here is around feedback. So one of the features of each question type is corrective feedback and that will automatically appear in the game but teachers can add additional feedback to the feedback tab to maximize learning so just click here you can add additional feedback if there's additional context or common misconceptions that students that need to be addressed uh, you can do that here scroll to the bottom and click save and close once you finish all right excellent now we're moving on to the next question, which is multiple select. Uh, the next question will be, um, go ahead and click add. Perfect. And click multiple choice. And now click text. Excellent. And so we're going to enter the prompt, what does enter your name, never leave the classroom without. And now we were encourage you to enter uh, multiple correct responses here uh, and choose what do you never leave the classroom without so jenna's going to enter a few here and you'll notice up here at the top right hand corner uh, near, next to responses is that you can see you can enable multiple responses so click that button here and then uh, check off the correct responses all right uh and now scroll down the next feature i wanted to highlight is this higher order thinking so as you saw in the first question and this question there's a higher order thinking box um and so educators as you're creating your each of your questions you can check the higher order thinking box if the if the question requires students to analyze or evaluate information. This will help that specific question come up when students are practicing independently. And then you can scroll all the way down and click save and close. And then we're ready to move on to our next practice set. Our next, our next question. Excellent. All right, and this is the draw question. Now, uh, this is one of the most popular questions for students. As you can see on this screen here, students can collaborate to draw the correct answer. Um, and they really have a good time here with this. So in your practice set, click add, and then select draw. And then you'll enter the prompt, draw a picture of our classroom. All right, excellent. And the next feature that I wanted to highlight about all of our questions is the standards. So go ahead and click on standards. And I just wanna highlight the variety of ways in which you can search for a standard. You can either search the standard number, you can enter a keyword, you can select by state grade level, and subject. Uh, and so as you are creating your practice sets, aligning each question to the standard will enable you to then see uh, the reports of how well your students are doing and their accuracy towards each of the standards that you've selected. All right, and scroll down. 
click save and close. All right. And then while I wanted to highlight, I would encourage you to add a few more questions later on after this session. Uh, this, this practice set is only three questions. Um, it'll go, it'll only last between five and six minutes. Um, but we'll, we're going to show you how to launch a live session with your students now. So now that you've created your first practice set, we're going to show you how to add students to your classroom before you start your live practice set. So this will happen um, about five minutes or so before you start your live session is so you're thinking about your lesson plans. So first, uh, we're going to click on, great, go to classroom, excellent. Then uh, click on the classroom that you just created. So you can see Jenna had clicked on the title. And then you're going to click generate classroom link to invite students to your classroom. So you'll copy the link. Uh, and then you'll uh, send the link to students. And then students will um, go to app.giantsteps.app. They'll automatically go. And then they will um, be prompted to log in with either Google, Clever, or Microsoft. And so as you can see here, uh, Jenna has uh, sent me the link. And then I've, I am being added as a student to her classroom. And then we encourage you to give students about five minutes to create their avatar. This will help build investment in the experience. It'll also give students to, something to do while you are approving each of the students who joins your class. All right. And now that we've added students to the class, we're going to show you how to launch a live session. All right. So launching a live session, imagine yourself in front of your students uh and getting ready to launch a live session game so what you're going to do is you're going to go to my library and click my library and then click on the practice set our classroom and then click start session start live session so then a new tab will pop up um, this will allow you to preview your practice set and gives you a few options for settings. So first on the left, uh, you can select the classroom. So in this case, this is the classroom that you just created. And then you can select the timing for each of the questions. We encourage you for your very first practice set to use a little bit longer time than you think your students will need. This will enable students to get used to the experience, kind of explore, uh, understand how to communicate with uh, their teammates, and it'll just give students a little bit uh, more time to think about the question and play the game. So with that, you also have the option to randomize the question order or allow guest students. And then um, when you're ready, once you've reviewed all the questions, you can also have the option to skip a question if there's a question that you don't wanna include that day. And then you'll click start session. All right, and then we encourage you to share this screen on the big screen. So whether or not that's a smart board you have in class or a projector or um, any sort of large screen that you're sharing, we encourage you to share this with your students so that they can all feel a part of the classroom here. Um, so now click Let's Play. All right, and so I'm going to um, join the class here. So you can see my avatar will pop up here on this classroom. Um, and what we wanted to highlight here is that you can now quickly review which students have logged in and which ones are ready to play the game. So um, you can, the green indicates attendance. You can click on show students. And so you'll see the list of students who have joined. You can then uh, click get started. And here students will have the option to shuffle um, to decide on what the name of the 
of their team is. So they'll either have the option to change the color, the adjective, or the noun. And if you quickly look at the teams and notice that there are a couple of students who would be um, who would be better suited to be in the same group or different groups, you can quickly shuffle the teams uh, to ensure your students are operating at their very best. All right. And once you're ready to move forward, click Let's Play. Fantastic. Now we encourage you to read the rules um, to your students the very first time you play the game. So here, answer a question and earn a token. Only one team member needs to get the correct answer to earn a token. And then to place your token on the big board. So be strategic. Where are the most points available? And then prize rounds happen every few questions. And so prize rounds help students earn points and prizes uh, throughout the game. And when you're ready to play, click Start Game. Excellent. And again, here, this is what the students, uh, this is what uh, you will see as the teacher and the students will see the question and then they'll have a place to answer the text response and they'll see multiple things. But again, we encourage you to join our Giant Steps live session to get a better understanding and feel for what the students experience when they play Giant Steps big board game. All right. Uh, so after the session, uh, students will see their game summary, as you can see here on the right hand side with the image, as soon as the game ends. Students can click go to locker to equip the new items they've earned for their avatar. And then you can explain to students that the more they learn, the more they earn, so keep practicing. Students will be able to access uh, Giant Steps at home or on mobile devices uh, if needed, so they can continue to practice independently. All right, and with that, I wanted, uh, before we move into our Q&A, we wanted to show you one more way in which you can add, uh, create a live session with content from the public library. So I'm gonna pass it over to Jenna to show you, a, give you a little introduction to our public library and the different content, certified content that we have in that public library. Take it away, Jenna. Great. Thanks so much, Melissa. Um, so in the shared libraries, which you can find right here at the top next to mine library, you can find both certified content, which has been made by a team of content specialists. And then there's also um, content that's been created by other teachers in various grade levels and subject areas. Um, and for the certified content, we currently have certified content for ELA grades six through 10 and math grades six through eight, but we are working very quickly to get additional content out. And the way that you can find what you're looking for, there's a few tools. We have the search feature right here where you can type in a keyword that you're looking for. And you can also use the filtering tool to help you find a practice set on the topic that you're interested in. So for example, let's take a look to see if we can find a practice set on analogies. When I type in analogies, four practice sets come up. And I wanted to uh, point out here that the way you can tell which sets are certified are um, there's a little denotion here at the top to let you know. Um, and also you can use the filtering tool here at the bottom to do um, giant step certified practice sets only and toggle that feature on. Looking here at the tile of each of these four practice sets, you can see a quick snapshot. So you can see the title. And if you hover over, if there's um, if the entire title doesn't fit, we can see this is synonym and antonym analogies. Right below, it also shows the creator. So since this is certified, it's giant steps. The subject um, is vocabulary. And then right here shows which grades the content is uh, written for and aligned to. Um, so this is for seventh and eighth grade. And then the final line shows if and what standards a practice set is aligned to. So let's say you found the practice that you want to do, synonym and antonym analogies. Um, then you'll want to go ahead and copy it to your library. So to do that, you're just going to click the copy to my library button right here. And then it'll show you right here, this little toast pops up to let you know you did it successfully. So that when you go into my library, that new practice set right here 
will be there. So now it's ready to be used in a live session or assigned to your students to be done independently. And there's so much to explore in the shared libraries. And we really encourage you to spend some time in there and look through all the fantastic content that's available. Um, but for now, we'll move on to the Q&A. Awesome. All right. So uh, if we have any questions in the chat, we'll answer those. Um, but until those come up, we've got a few questions uh, that we will uh, answer that, that's come up in previous sessions. So first, the question is, can you import questions from other products? The answer is yes, and we'll show you that right now. So you can import questions from other products um, by going, uh, and you can do practice. Um, for You can also do this for sets you've already created. Um, the way in which you can do that is um, by creating a new practice set. Uh, or what we can go to the, sorry. Do we want to add to the it to an set. existing one? Yeah, okay. well, we'll add it to an existing practice set so we don't have to okay. enter in all of the details. So we're in the classroom that we have um, created or the, we're in the practice set that we created today and we'll click import. And here you will see uh, a pop-up come out uh, on the side and it, you can either copy a Google Sheet or download our template and add the questions here. Or you can uh, also, if you already have a CSV from Look It, GimKit, Kahoot, or Quizzes, you can upload them here as well. It's that easy. And then each of the questions will show up as, it, as its own practice, as its own question in the practice set. Great question. Um, it looks like we have another one about student performance. Excellent. So the question is, uh, how can you see your student, how your students performed on a practice set? This is an excellent question. Uh, so go to the practice set that you would like to see uh, how students performed. So you can go to either our classroom or the specific practice set itself. Fantastic. So we went to the six, the one classroom and then we can click the practice sets. Uh, and if you click on the practice set, you will be able to see how well students performed overall as a class. And as you click in, you can see how well they performed on each uh, question. And you can also see uh, performance by students. So you can see how well each student did and you can also see performance by standard. So you can see how well this is a practice set based on one standard and how well students are performing, how accurately they're answering the questions based on this standard as well. Great question. Multiple ways to see student performance. All right. And then a great question about independent practice. So there's so many ways you can use giant steps. We showed the way you can use it collaboratively collaboratively in the classroom, but how do you create independent practice? Excellent. So here you can go to the practice set that you want to use for independent practice. So we can click our classroom and then it's as simple as clicking create an assignment. You'll see a pop out come out and here you can add a description if you would like. You can select a, uh, an assigned a start date or a due date. So we'll start with now, you can assign a due date and time. So if you'd like students to complete this by a specific time, um, you can. And then you can set an accuracy goal. So what the accuracy goal here will allow students to continue practicing until they reach that goal. So students will be prompted to continue to practice this practice set until they reach that 80% accuracy. Then you can assign it to one or multiple classrooms. Uh, and then you can click create assignment. Excellent. Uh, and then students on their side will see their performance as well. It looks like we have time for just about one more question. Um, we can end with a fun one here. What is XP? Excellent. This is a great question. Uh, XP is experience points. So the more points that students earn, 
uh, the more they can purchase for their avatar. If they explore, they have different opportunities to explore a, a map, a season map, where they can decide on specific items. Um, and it's just a really fun way that students are able to uh, be rewarded for all of the amount that they practice. All right. Okay. With that, thank you all so much for joining us. We're super excited. Can't wait to hear how uh, your students do on their first live session and hope to see you again. Thank you all for joining us.